do you know the names of the U.S. residents who then became the presidents and got a view from the White House Lou of Pennsylvania Avenue? George Washington was the first you see. He once chopped down a cherry tree. President number two would be John Adams and then number three. Tom Jefferson stayed up to write a declaration late at night. So he and his wife had a great big fight and she made him sleep on the couch all night. James Madison never had a son and he fought the War of 1812. James Monroe's colossal nose was bigger than Pinocchio. John Quincy Adams was number six and it's Andrew Jackson's but he kicks. So Jackson learns to play politics next time he's the one that the country picks. Martin Van Buren, number eight, for a one-term shot as chief of state. William Harrison, how do you praise that guy was dead in 30 days? John Tyler, he liked country folk. And after him came President Polk. Zachary Taylor liked to smoke. His breath killed friends whenever he spoke. 1850, really nifty, Miller Fillmore's in. Young and fierce was Franklin Pierce, the man without a chin. Follows next up, period spanning. Four long years with James Buchanan. Then the South starts shooting cannon. And we got a civil war. A war, a war down south of Dixie. Up to bat comes old Abe Lincoln. There's a guy who's really thinking. Kept the United States from shrinking. Saved the ship of state from sinking. Andrew Johnson's next. He had some slight defects. Congress each would impeach. And so the country now elects. Ulysses Simpson Grant, who would scream and rave and rant. While drinking whiskey, oh, the risky, cause he's failing on his pants. It's 1877 and the Democrats would gloat. But they're all amazed when Rutherford Hayes wins by just one vote. James Garfield, someone really hated, cause he was assassinated. Chester Arthur gets instated, four years later he was traded. For Grover Cleveland, really fat, elected twice as a Democrat. Then Benjamin Harrison, after that, is William McKinley up the bat. Teddy Roosevelt charged up San Juan Hill. And President Taft, he got the bill. In 1913, Woodrow Wilson takes us into World War I. Warren Harding next in line. It's Calvin Coolidge, he does fine. And then in 1929, the market crashes and we fight. It's Herbert Hoover's big debut, he gets the blame and loses too. Franklin Roosevelt, president who helped us win in World War II. Harry Truman, weird little human, serves two terms and when he's done. It's Eisenhower who's got the power from 53 to 61. John Kennedy had Camelot, then Lyndon Johnson took his spot. Richard Nixon, he gets caught and Gerald Ford fell down a lot. <laughs> Jimmy Carter like camping trips. And Ronald Reagan speeches scripts all came from famous movie clips. And President Bush said, read my lips. Now in Washington, D.C. There's Democrats in the GOP. But the ones in charge are plain to see. The Clintons, Bill and Hillary. Al Gore lost bad cause of one hanging jab. W hunted for WMDs. Obama brought hope, so Clinton thought dope. 2016 should be a real breeze. So Hillary finally broke that glass ceiling? No, but it certainly does feel like it's raining shards of glass all around us. The country's cut into two, the red and the blue. Facebook's a toxic waste of. The Fox friends are doting, the Russians are voting, and now there's a president, Trump. The next president to lead the way. Well, it just might be yourself one day. Then the press will distort everything you say. So jump in your plane and fly away.